how many solar panels should you buy? The answer is simple. If you have a reasonable electricity consumption and feed-in tariff, I recommend getting as many panels as are allowed by your local electricity network, as many as you can afford, and as many as will fit on your roof. Now, Scout's Honor, I promise you I don't say that as some kind of slimy sales patter to get you to spend more money. You see, once you've decided to pull the trigger and go solar, you'll be paying a solar company to roll their truck, get on your roof for the day, and start installing panels. And the way the solar rebate works, it's paid per panel. And it covers all or most of the cost of each panel from the wholesaler. That means, once the guys are on your roof, it actually costs very little to add more panels. And the more panels you have, the more energy you'll have to power your home, especially in the morning, late afternoon, in winter, and on overcast days. Here's an example of well-meaning, but bad, solar sizing advice. Let's say a solar salesperson works out that between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m., i.e. when the sun shines, you typically use eight kilowatt hours of energy. A three kilowatt solar system will generate about 12 kilowatt hours a day on average. So he tells you, you're wasting your money getting any more panels. 12 kilowatt hours is way more than your eight kilowatt hours usage. This advice is bad because averaging everything out will give you mediocre results and your bills will be higher than they need to be. The three kilowatt solar system might cost four and a half grand. For an extra $1,500, you could get 6.6 .6 kilowatts. And look how much extra energy you'll get to use in the peak morning and evening times. And look how much extra energy you'll get in winter when you need the energy for heating. That buy small advice is starting to look like really crap advice. And you may find this hard to believe, but your next car is likely to be electric. If not your next one, the one after that will almost certainly be electric. When you start charging a car at home, you will be really grateful for those extra panels. And although they're expensive at the moment, home batteries will soon be commonplace. To charge a battery through the year, more panels are very useful. So you should get a big system. Now, let's understand what will limit how many panels you can have what your local electricity network, DNSP or distributed network service provider allows you to install, your budget and the size of your roof. Let's go into a bit more detail on each of these. First limit on solar size, your local network rules. Your DNSP is the entity that owns and maintains your local electricity network. Your electricity supply will either be single phase where one live wire is going from the grid to your home, two phase, where there are two live wires, or three phase, where there are three live wires. Single phase homes are the most common. This chart shows the limits each DNSP has for solar. Looking at New South Wales, for example, in the essential energy area, you're allowed a maximum of five kilowatts of inverter capacity per phase, but the installation rules allow for 33% more panels than your rated inverter capacity. 33% more than five kilowatts is 6.6 .6 kilowatts. That's why you see so many ads advertising 6.6 .6 kilowatts. You might have noticed some DNSPs allow you to have up to 10 kilowatts of inverter capacity on a single phase with the caveat that you're only allowed to export five kilowatts. That means you could theoretically have a 10 kilowatt inverter a huge 13.3 kilowatt system on your roof and export limit the whole system to five kilowatts, meaning you can only export five kilowatts to the grid at any given time. That might sound nuts, but it can make sense if you have big loads, like pool heaters, big air conditioners, or even an electric car, because the more you use in your home, the less you've got available to export. Imagine you have 13 kilowatts of panels with a 10 kilowatt inverter. You'll never generate more than 10 kilowatts that's the inverter's limit, and you'll never export more than five kilowatts, the export limit. But in the morning, you'll get to 10 kilowatts much quicker, giving you more energy sooner. And in the evening, your energy will drop off later. You'll get a squarer curve. And if you have big loads in your home, your export limit can have little impact. Look, for example, I have an electric car, 
That pulls seven kilowatts when it's charging and it can charge for up to 10 hours a day. I have a battery that charges at three kilowatts. I want lots of power for as long as possible. Having said that, export limiting does affect your solar savings and payback. So get your solar installer to run the numbers for you based on what you need to power now and in the future. The second limit on solar size is your budget. This is pretty straightforward. You can't put solar on if you can't pay for it. If you don't have the cash available to buy solar outright, many installers are offering finance with low interest green loans. Some are offering no interest ever, buy now, pay later finance. But in my humble opinion, buy now, pay later finance is one of the worst ways to buy a system. That's because zero cost finance can actually add 25% or more onto the cost of the system. You're paying a big price for the zero interest deal. Here's a chart showing what you can expect to pay for solar systems at the time of filming, October 2020. To see the most up-to-date price ranges, click the link I've put in the description. The lower end prices are for budget end systems, the higher end prices for premium systems with more bells and whistles such as microinverters or power optimizers. You can also expect to pay more if your roof is difficult to install on or if you need electrical work done such as a switchboard upgrade. What you'll notice is that for example 6.6 kilowatt solar systems are only marginally more expensive than 5 kilowatt systems. Such oversized systems represent great bang for buck because as already mentioned, the solar rebate is actually based on the number of panels you have, not your inverter capacity. The third limit to solar size is your roof space. It used to be the case that if you had limited roof space and needed to squeeze as much solar on as possible, your only option was to pay through the nose for super high efficiency Rolls Royce panel brands like LG and SunPower, which make residential sized panels up to 400 watts in size. But nowadays, many budget end panel manufacturers are making very efficient 370 watt residential panels. Meaning, if you're on a budget with limited roof space, you can still squeeze a lot of solar generation out of your roof without top of the range panels. To give you an idea of how much space a 6.6 .6 kilowatt solar array using 330 watt panels will take up, I've put together this picture. The savings and payback period of a given solar system depends on a few things, such as your solar self-consumption ratio and your feed-in tariff. But I've put together a nifty calculator linked in the description that will run the numbers for you and predict what your savings will be in under a minute. To summarize, the most common lament I hear from solar owners is that they wish they'd put on more panels when they had the chance. You'll want to max out your roof with solar now because it's really expensive and complicated to expand an existing solar array at a later date. As batteries and electric cars become more popular, you'll be kicking yourself for not having more generation capacity to power your home and charge your EV and charge that home battery. With typical payback times of five years or less for a system that has a lifespan of 25 plus years, if you know of a better lower risk investment, I'd love to hear it.